Good morning. This is uh, Joe, and you're at Painting with Joe. That's me, and we're painting. This morning, I'm going to do a little quick, uh, a quick demonstration. We're going to paint in on a piece of painting paper, for lack of better terms. This is a paper that is made for oil, oil or acrylic paint. So what I'm doing is I'm taking some ultramarine blue going across the top. I'm going to paint part of this. This is for a really fast painting. Fast part of a painting, I should say. I'm not going to do the whole thing. At least not right now. So we're painting in a sky. This is, You'll see this theme a lot. This is northern Minnesota. We've got a lot of lakes. And we're painting right across. The sky is always darker at the top. Not always, but for painting purposes, I like to make the sky darker at the top. The sky is a really big thing, so it, uh, sometimes you don't get that darkness. It's all the same color from tree line to the top. But because we have artistic license, we have a license to paint. I like the 007 of the painting world. So we paint in the sky. I'm going to grab a little bit of different paint here now. Put our brush in the water. For illustrative purposes, I'm going to grab some green earth. We're going to put in a far shoreline. Just a little bit of paint. And then up close, we're going to put in some trees. So if we had a far shoreline going in, say it went like so. In fact, let's do this. We'll make the shoreline go. And this is what I like to call scritching. We're scritching the brush. We're not painting every stroke. You can paint every stroke, but I like to scritch a little bit. It keeps it more random. And I can see I want to extend the sky because I just made a midstream plan here, which as I do very often, often when I'm painting, you'll say, you know what, let's do it this way. And so you do it that way. So we're going to add a little bit more sky in here. We're going to add some blue and some white so we kind of match that other color. And the way you get a perfect match is repaint the whole thing. Years ago, I read about a guy at a hardware store who was matching color for a lady, <clears throat> her paint. And she um, kept coming in with the chip saying, okay, match that. So he'd match it. She'd go home and say, no, that's not quite it. That's not quite it. And after, you know, six tries, he was finally getting really frustrated. And um, finally, he succeeded in, um, got a little bit of green there. He succeeded in getting a perfect color match, and another employee came up to him and said, I was watching you with that woman. She was driving you crazy. What on earth did you do to finally match her paint perfectly? He said, it's easy. I just painted the chip. So that's what we're going to do here. If you don't, the sky doesn't work out right. If you can't get the perfect match, just repaint the sky. See how much time that's taken? It's not taking much time at all. It's not the end of the world. One of the big things in painting is a lot of people really get upset when they make an error in painting with acrylic paint. And acrylic paint is very forgiving for the most part. It doesn't come down, it doesn't stay there and take forever to dry. Now oil paint is really a neat product because of the long drying time. It allows colors to blend. But uh, I can't even imagine how one would go about taking classes for that because you'd have to have your paint drying and you'd have to wait three days and um, I've never obviously taken that, so I don't know. Never had, a, never really had a painting class before in any kind of like this. I've had some watercolor exposure, but not in this kind of painting at all. So we're putting in a cloud bank. I always like those clouds that go up alongside the trees. And then they kind of make a line going across. They look a little like snow clouds, which we're going to be experiencing here not too, not too far from now which I'm not happy about. I don't really want snow clouds, so maybe I should paint, you know, not snow clouds. Anyway, 
So now I'm going to pick up a little bit of green here. We're going to put in a shoreline that goes back a ways underneath those clouds. And I'm pulling sideways, but I'm going to add a little bit of blue to that. So we're looking to add a little bit of blue because it's distant. And then we're going to add a little bit of green because it's still, you still can see green that far away, but there's like a blue haze sometimes, depending on the day and where you're at and that sort of thing. So this part comes down a little farther. We'll add a few trees in here now with just the end of the brush. So if you notice, I'm not spending a lot. I'm just kind of, I'm pounding the brush in here. I'm tapping the brush, the, 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 the bristles in at an angle. I'll take a little bit of blue. I'm looking just for tones right now. We've got our trees going, we've got a bunch of different trees, and we'll take some green and go over the top of those just because there'll be some green in the branches. Like that. And then you've got under the trees, and I'll grab a different paint. Grab a little bit of burnt umber. It doesn't matter. I'm looking for something brown or something darker, I should say. A little bit of burnt umber. Put that in here at the bottom underneath the trees and right about now I'm going to be switching brushes because this brush is getting a little on the unwieldy side for me I like a little bit more control go back get some green and we'll do that we're going to grab this brush it's a number two round just because we can kind of use the point of it and the side of it to kind of get some shoreline going here a little bit of blue-brown mix. Blue-brown mix makes undertones and shadows. So I'm just putting this in kind of rapidly. I'm not spending a lot of time with it. If I was painting off the clock, we'd spend more time. But I'm trying to just give you an overview as to how much time you have to spend to rough something in. So we've got little trees growing. And the shoreline. The other shoreline in the back is going to be a little bit dark, but not as dark as this one. The one that's close to us that has more shadows cast from the sun. Assuming it's a sunny day. And the other thing is too, acrylic paint dries dark. So I take a little bit of white and go back in on your leading edge of your cloud. I'm putting my brush kind of flat. I'm not going in like that. A lot of people's tendency is to go like this. We go like that. Just put that in there. Make the clouds appear. The bottom edge of that bright white spot, I'm going to soften just a little by dragging my brush over it. And you've got some clouds in the distance that tint kind of blue. We've got some trees in the background that tint kind of blue, and they're going to dry darker. They always do. They always go dark. With acrylic paint, with watercolor, it dries lighter. With acrylic paint, it dries darker. I'm going to leave that little line in there. I don't like to leave defined lines, if possible, so everything's kind of broken up. Sometimes you got to leave a line. It depends on what you're painting. But we're going to paint the blue in for the lake right here. So it goes around that point. And the shoreline is always straight. If the shoreline's not straight, the water runs out of the lake. Not always straight, but I mean, when you look at it, it's straight across. Sometimes it'll be varied due to the shore rounding out, like right there. It would do, you'd get a little bit of rounding right on this part here, assuming that the, the, the shore is curved to us. You know, if you came with your canoe, you'd be going right here, then you'd have to turn this way and then go around that point and right into where I just now made a mistake with the brush. So here's this. We'll add a little bit of darker blue in. And maybe we'll add that cloud line in. Pretend you can see that reflection in the water to some degree. And, we'll just, and now I'm scritching for sure. Scritching is when you take your brush and you kind of smear paint around, grab a little bit of paint and rub it in, scritch, scritch, scritch. It makes a scritching sound. You probably can hear that scritching. That's a highly technical term. I made it up years ago. 
because for lack of a better term, I don't know what to call it. So here we are scritching, scritch, scritching in color. At this point, we're far enough from that shore, we can go back to the angle brush. We're gonna extend the water down. We'll take some blue. Water is generally darker than the sky, not always, but a lot of times. And we're using an angle brush. An angle, or see the angle in the brush there? It's cut it at an angle. We drag that over. The angle brush blends colors beautifully. It allows you to control the tip of the brush where it's placed and then still drag out other colors. So you can double load this. You can put white on the end and put a little bit of blue on the back and you get this. Look at that. See, you get that blend. You go back and forth and you'll, you mix it a little bit better in your brush, but you can see that white on the tip of my brush right there. It makes that blue blend. So now we want to blend it all the way down. So we're going to add some white. Add a little bit more white there. We'll have some variation in the water. And with this, because I'm painting, really speed painting this morning, I'm in fact going to do this, I'm going to grab the little, littler brush and we're going to turn the painting because we can, we're going to turn this here. I've got some water on the ferrule of my brush, you get water right here and it runs on your painting and then you go, you make that arg sound like arg, where's me parrot? So we go here just to define that shoreline a little bit more where it cuts around. and pull some down by scritching. We're pulling paint down. So the bulk of our paint is here, but we're pulling as we drag the brush, we roll the brush around because there's paint on both sides of the brush, we pull paint down. And we kind of blend it in with the blue that's down there so it looks like something. Blend it all the way down here if you want. All right, so now before I go, I'm going to add, if I could only find my black, where it is. Well, it's black. Well, it's indigo. We'll use indigo. I don't care. Because we would put green over the top of this. But we're going to do something here just to make it. We're going to have trees in the foreground, but these would be the undertone, the shadows. And you're going to see how I'm putting these in. We're just going to go like that. Scritch the tree in. We can put some of the trunk right here, down, and then you scritch branches back and forth. But we're just scritching, scritch, scritch, scritch. There, I just got a big puddle of water in there and it came off of my ferrule. And now some people go, oh my God, I wrecked my painting. All you do is you take your paper towel and go like that. And most of it's gone. There's a little bit left there I see in the reflection and I don't care about that. We resume scritching. Scritch, 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 scritch. You gotta make that noise too when you're doing this, scritch, scritch, scritch. So we come down to the bottom and we scritch in an island or a point. It can be either one, doesn't matter. Like so. And we let the trees shine behind. So none of this is hard to do. It's just a matter of having some brush control. And that does take a little bit of time. You got to be able to hold your brush lightly and make a light line and know when to thin your paint out. And it's called, it's called practice. You just got to get better at it. And it, it, just commit the time to it. It's a fantastic way to grow old because none of this is heavy. <laughs> and when you're done, you can sell it. And if you can't sell it, well, you can give it to the family and friends and all that other stuff. But actually, you know, you'd be surprised at how easy it is to, or, well, I shouldn't say easy, but easier to become proficient at this just with practice and spend a very small amount of time with it every day. If you can paint every day. Now, this is all looking really dark, but I'm going to come in later with green and we're going to make those branches pop out. We're going to make some rocks down here. Oops, I just grabbed brown. See, now I just made a major mistake right there. I mean, I grabbed brown by mistake. Big deal. It's just, it's not the end of the world. 
and down here in the water we could put down trees, but to finish the water out. But for today, we scratched and brushed the trees to get an idea as to how hard it is to scritch, scritch, scritch. So when you hear me say scritching, this is what I'm talking about, scritch. Simple, loose, fast painting, and it makes scritching sounds. You can hear the scritching, maybe you can, maybe you can't. I can hear it scritching. All right, and we'll come back some other time. We'll see you later.